Hey guys, what's up? I'm back with another video. I'm going to continue my series of showing you some of my favorite cards that I purchased over the past year. Um, since we don't really have any new card releases coming out, we're waiting for still for the new 2020 cards to come out here in a few weeks. So I'm going to kind of backtrack and show you some of my favorite cards that I purchased over the past year. Uh, like I've said in previous videos, I really didn't get back into collecting up until this past season. So uh, this is the first first year where I ever went back to card shows, purchased cards at, at stores, um, on online. I've shown you flea markets uh, cards before. I've shown you eBay cards before. I've shown you cards that I pulled out of packs. This time I'm going to show you some cards I purchased at, at card shows, my favorite cards that I got this past year at card shows. And uh, here's just a couple of like my honorable mentions. These are cards that I usually... I uh, could find out of the $1 rack, Doolittle Rookie, the Patrick Corbin Rookie, Corbin who came up so big in Game 7 of the World Series uh, for the Nationals, and then Brett Saberhagen Rookie who was the MVP of the 1985 World Series as a 20 or 21 year old for the Royals. So, um, in full disclosure, I didn't really go to card shows until I believe it was May was the first card show that I went to, and um, then every month two months or so, it came back towards my area, so I was able to go to five or so, four or five, over the course of 2019. So, in the number 10 spot, I found this. I believe this was a November show, a Will Myers Green Rookie Parallel. I believe this was just for a dollar or two. I don't usually have a big budget when I go to card shows. I'll usually, you know, get $80, $100 out of out of the bank and and take it up there and I kind of limit my budget to that and usually I, I come in pretty well under that so you'll you're not gonna see any you know fifty hundred dollar cards in here this is the 2013 tops update the same set that the Yelich rookie comes out of but Will Myers the green refractor for a couple bucks obviously he hasn't had quite of the career that he was somewhat touted for when he came up when the Tampa Bay organization and then obviously got traded to Kansas City and then James Shields and Wade Davis trade and then after his time in Kansas City they sent him um, out to San Diego so Will Myers in the number 10 spot number nine man the guy I purchased some cards from a guy this was soon after the national the national baseball conference in Chicago or the convention this guy had this card, just kind of, he didn't have prices on his cards, he just had a big box, and I just made a stack and, and made him an offer, and I think, man, I got like 12, 15 cards for like 20 bucks. This, which I'd never seen before, Donruss Elite 2011 building blocks, you've got Lindor, you've got Javi Baez, um, on the back you've got some guys who never really made that big of an impact, Levi Michael and Jake Hager, I don't think they either one of those ever made it to the major leagues. Um, card number two in this series. I thought it was cool to get Lindor and Baez on the same card. Panini Elite Extra Edition from 2011. I wasn't even collecting cards then, so I had no idea that was even a thing, but I liked the way that one looked. In my number eight spot, this card is in the worst shape of all of them, but I just had to pay some respect to the man on the card, Larry Doby. This was a dollar. You can see it's obviously in horrible condition compared to new cards. It's even got like some spots here, maybe even be some water damage or molding damage, but I don't even care, you know. I don't really have too many cards this old, and to get a legend like Larry Doby, if you're young, one of the, a younger person watching this, Larry Doby was the first black man to play in the American League uh, after, obviously, Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier, barrier officially uh, with the Brooklyn Dodgers in the National League. He was the first person Larry Doby was to play of color in the American League. So I just really love that card just because of, of who it is. Obviously the condition isn't great, but I think I got that for a dollar. Um, I'm going to jump on that every time. This last video, or excuse me, my, my this next card, number seven on my list, you saw me in my most recent December baseball card show video. Purchased this, Panini Crusade, Eloy Jimenez. This is like the Ruby parallel, I think. Uh, three dollars. I just really like the black and the red and the white. Just kind of what goes pretty well. Uh, Panini Crusade rookie card of Eloy Jimenez. This one's numbered out of two ninety nine, or excuse me, one ninety nine. And I purchased this in December, so you may have seen that in my most recent um, video about 
about cards I purchased at the baseball card show in December. All right, so there's 10, 9, 8, 7 in my number six spot. I couldn't just put one of these cards. The same guy who I had luck finding this card with, he had just been to the National, and he had a bunch of these. There were some special packs that were put out at the National for people who attended the convention or attended the conference. And so I was able to get this Keston Hira, this Wander Franco. You can see all these are numbered out of 299. Fernando Tatis Jr., and Luis Robert, and all four of these numbered out of 299. And like I said, I've just made a stack of about 10 to 15 cards. And he, I don't know, gave me a prize of like 20 bucks, and it was awesome. So I put all four of these together. These are all, if you look on the back, they're they're not numbered like a regular card. You're like, man, what release does that come from? And you can see down at the bottom, 2019, the National. And so these were specially made for that the National Baseball Card Convention in Chicago. So these weren't things you could like pick up out on the market or you're not going to be able to find these in packs. And uh, to my knowledge, they're exclusive to the National. And I thought getting four big rookies um, for just a couple dollars each or even less than a dollar each, I thought was an awesome, awesome deal. So that's my number six card. Actually, cards. Number five. Um, man, I, I mean, Mike Trout, what, what else can you say? I didn't even know this was a thing that Donruss did this year. This is the 150th. It's got a little stamp on it. I don't know if it's a, what it's the 150th anniversary of, to be honest. Um, this one was also numbered. I believe I got this card for $1 or $2, numbered out of 150 And I know you can't tell in the video, but if I pull this card out of here, this has a cloth back. You know how Topps has those kind of vintage cards with the vintage stock? That's what this card is made out of. The back feels that old school um, vintage stock almost like the old cardstock that they used to use. So this is a Mike Trout. I don't know the name of this parallel. Um, the front of the card feels like a, a regular card, but the back has that vintage stock. And I thought that was just really neat. Anytime you can get a numbered Mike Trout, I was all over that, especially for a couple dollars. Okay, here is the next one on my list. Number four spot goes to these two, Madison Bumgarner tops rookies that I picked up. I believe these were like two or three dollars each. Um, this is maybe one of the first or second card shows that I went to. There was a guy who had a table outside of the room. His, his table wasn't even inside the little convention center. And he just had a big stack of cards. And he's actually going to show up again later on in my list. Um, some cards I purchased from this guy. And he quoted me a good price. Um, Bumgarner. I don't know if he's on a Hall of Fame track or not, but with his postseason and World Series heroics, he could very well end up being a Hall of Famer when it's all said and done. And he's a, he's a guy who's kind of weird. He he doesn't show up in Topps releases. Like if you buy any Topps cards over the last couple of years, you'll notice Bumgarner's not included. I don't know if he just he didn't sign a contract with them or he decided not to have his his likeness used by Topps products. So you will never see a Bumgarner card with his... Um, name and the official logo and the Giants logo on there um, for any Topps releases just because he has, for whatever reason, and I don't know why, decided not to sign the contract or he's had a beef with them or whatever. So to get his rookie, uh, two of them for a decent price, I jumped on that. We're down to the final three cards here in my number three spot. And I, I don't know, I think I'm kind of just irrationally um, a big fan of this guy, Josh Bell. This is the short print version of his rookie card and he said the guy who had these he had them in kind of these strange to see cases you know you don't really see many people putting them in these little i don't know what they're called jewel cases um but he had a whole bunch of cards in these little cases and i i grabbed a few that i liked one of them was this a short print josh bell and i'm hoping that he can have another good year in pittsburgh so that's my number three card in the number two spot you're going to see a lot of this card and a lot of news about this guy over the next few weeks. This is the iconic oh, Derek Jeter. Obviously not the number one Derek Jeter rookie card. And that's obviously the 93 SP, which I do not have. Uh, but I don't have this. His his tops release, the 1993 draft pick card. I believe it's a Series 1 tops, And uh, it has a, a pretty good following right now. The $15 sticker on there is probably what it goes for, maybe a little bit high, but 
I didn't up pay I did not end up paying the full fifteen dollars. I kind of packaged this together with another card, and he gave me a good discount. Um, even though the sticker price said fifteen dollars, so there it is, card number ninety eight from series one of nineteen ninety three tops. This is one that's probably going to shoot up in value a little bit whenever he gets uh, officially elected to the Hall of Fame here in a couple weeks. And that brings you to my number one card. Uh, this is another one I picked up in December from the same guy who I got these Bumgarner cards from. And if you watch my December card show video, you'll you'll have some familiarity with what I'm talking about. Uh, this is the most expensive card that I purchased. In fact, you could probably add up all of the the amounts I paid for all of them on, on my little box here, and it wouldn't equal what I paid for this one. This is a Mookie Betts Tops Update 2014 Tops Update Blue Walmart Edition Rookie Card. And the guy, I've told this story in my other video, but I'll kind of briefly summarize it. The guy who had these Madison Bumgarner cards is the same guy set up in the same spot. His table isn't even in the conference center. He's right outside the door, and he just had this card just sitting raw. It wasn't even in a penny sleeve, legit. It wasn't in a top loader. It wasn't even in a penny sleeve. It was in one of these. And I, you know what? I, I think it might have been in a penny sleeve, but it wasn't in a top loader at all. And I couldn't believe this card was in there because it is a valuable card compared to what some of the other stuff he had in there. Um, he had some prices in there that were strange, and so anyway, I just asked him, hey, what price can you give me on this? And he didn't know, so he had to go ask some other people at other tables, and it took him like four, he had to go to four different people to get a price, because other people were like, man, I don't know, they didn't really want to waste time on, on somebody else's sale. And so I was hoping I could get this for like super cheap for, you know, two or three dollars, like I got the Bumgarners for. And unfortunately, he asked a guy who had a phone who could look it up on eBay and told him it was worth like 40 bucks, which um, was probably pretty accurate. And then he ended up selling it to me for 30 So that's probably the most expensive card I've ever purchased at a card show. But after I was able to kind of find that diamond in the rough, I don't know how it sat in his, his display all day long because I was literally there like... 30 minutes before the show ended and this show had been going on for like six hours and no one else had even gone and, and either asked him about it at all so anyway there's the number one card that I purchased off of a card show this year and it came in the most recent card show in December so I'll give you one last look at these I'm gonna plan on going back to these the card shows again uh, I looked at the calendar on the Beckett website uh, just a couple days ago and they're planning on coming back to my area um, every two or three months in 2020 so more than likely I'll be going back when I when my schedule allows and be picking up some more cards and I'll be more than happy to show them to you in my video so there they are my favorite 10 cards that I purchased at card shows over the last year so hopefully that can kind of keep you guys entertained and it'll kind of keep you guys thinking about baseball while we get ready and wait for the new 2020 releases here in a couple weeks thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one